The movie begins with a car driving at top speed on the road, swerving left and right and finally screeching to a halt in front of a building. Standing outside the building are a lot of photographers and press. A female narrator tells us that the couple exiting the car are her parents, born into the good life. They were old money, blue-blooded society sweethearts, the creme de la creme of society. One of the press members asks the woman if she and her husband are hoping for a boy or a girl. She responds that they'll be happy with whatever they have. Her husband ushers her through the crowd into the building. The narrator tells us that the couple was used to the attention they got from the press. So they welcome the crowd on what would be the happiest day of their lives, the birth of their child. Now, the woman is seated in a wheelchair and she's being pushed down the hallway by a doctor. She screams in pain and her husband's reassuring her. The press rushed behind him as the doors to the delivery room shuts. She tells us there was a curse on the Wilhern family when her great-great-great-grandfather, Ralph, had a fling with a servant girl named Clara. The fling resulted in a pregnancy, but when Ralph informs his family of his plans to marry Clara, he's mocked, making him realize how silly he must have sounded. So Ralph marries another woman, and a heartbroken Clara ends her life by jumping off a cliff. That night, Clara's mother, the town witch, shows up at the Wilhern's property scatters animal guts all over the lawn, and then proceeds to curse on the Wilhern family, commanding that the next Wilhern daughter will be born with a face like a pig. And only when the girl is wedded to someone from a respected family like the Wilherns will the curse be broken. Luckily, the next five Wilhern brides gave birth to all sons, who all fathered sons and their sons fathered sons and their sons fathered sons until Ella and Leonard Hugh Wilhern give birth to a daughter. Surprisingly, the girl has a normal face. Unknown to Leonard, the child wasn't his, but resulted from a scandal between his wife and his driver, so the child wasn't a Wilhern. Penelope is the first-born Wilhern girl as the scene shows the birth of a child with flaps over its ears. The next scene shows a man confessing his love for a lady who sits at the opposite end of a mirror. She's making him an origami hat as he continues to confess his love for her. He says he's always felt imprisoned for most of his life, just like she feels. She's puzzled and asks him why he feels imprisoned. She asks if he feels that way by his good looks and good name. He responds positively to her question. Before we go on, like the video, smash the subscribe button, turn on that notification bell, or Slender Man will haunt your dreams. She says no one seems to see past looks, and he agrees once more. He continues and tells her that if he's more than his name and face, then she's more than hers. He asks her to let him in. She opens the door and comes into the room. In a different room, a woman, Penelope's mother, jumps from her seat and screams. As she watches from a screen, the feed from the room where Penelope and her suitor were standing. Penelope says hi as the suitor gasps and points at her. In an instant, he screams and runs out of the house screaming. The narration continues, saying that the news of Penelope's birth exposed the scandal between her aunt and the driver. The news makes her Uncle Leonard jump out the window to his death. To protect themselves and their child from the constant disturbance by the press, her parents decided to fake Penelope's death and have her coffin cremated. She lived her life indoors. Penelope's mother hired a live-in butler named Jake, who helped with the baby. When Penelope turned 18, her mother hired Wanda, a dating agency consultant who specialized in finding the perfect matches for the rich and the wealthy of society, in the bid to find a suitor that would accept Penelope as is, thereby breaking the curse. They go through several potential suitors, but they end up jumping out the window in fright upon seeing Penelope's face and run away. Jake is tasked with chasing after some fleeing suitors and returning them to the house to sign a non-disclosure agreement. This time, Jake couldn't catch and return the fleeing suitor. The suitor runs to the police station and recounts what happened at the Wilhern's residence. The officers laugh derisively, saying it's not a crime to be ugly. They lock him up for the night. A man walks in and asks if the suitor who's being dragged away is a Vanderman. The officer confirms that the suitor is Edward Vanderman. Jake, Wanda, and Penelope's mom staked out Edward's house and were expecting him to be at home. The next morning, Edward strolls down the street towards his house. As Edward walks up the stairs to his house, he gets hit by a newspaper. He picks it up and sees the headline, which further annoys him. Penelope's mom wakes up to see a frustrated Edward grunting in the street. 
Penelope's mom walks into her room and informs her that they're moving. Edward storms into a crowded office and asks for Larry Bonsa. The man who came into the police station in the earlier scene looks up from his desk and sees Edward standing in the room. He turns to face his intercom mic and calls for security. Edwards explains to Larry that he's next in line to be chairman of the board at his father's company, and the story printed in the newspaper will hurt his reputation. Larry tells Edward it's not his problem. Edward threatens Larry to pull the story or else he would rip out Larry's guts. Larry calmly leans forward and calls for security through the intercom. Penelope's mom is pulling clothes out of Penelope's closet as she voices her fears that their house would become swarmed by reporters as it was 25 years ago when Penelope was exposed. Penelope tells her father that they could move to the beach, and her father responds that the beach is okay. He suggests that they move to France, where Penelope can practice her French. She agrees. Penelope's mom imagines her daughter strolling down the streets of France. Citizens gasp and scream as she walks by. Penelope's mom snaps out of her thoughts and tells her family that she overreacted. Hence, they won't need to move anymore. Edward's screaming as security drags him out. He's screaming for a retraction and he's telling the truth. He continues screaming when a dwarf wearing an eye patch walks by and hears him say that Penelope had a piggy snout on her face. He tells the officers to let Edward go. The dwarf is a tabloid reporter called Lemon. Lemon recounts how he lost his right eye, trying to convince him to go back to the Wilhern residence and get a photo of Penelope so they can clear their names but Edward insists he's too scared to go back to the residence. The short man plans to get someone else to go to the Wilhern place, but Edward tells him that the agency contacts only suitors from respected and wealthy families. Lemon goes to a gambling center and asks for a man named Maxwell Campion, and he's directed to a man seated at poker table number five. He approaches Max and reveals that he's researched his life. Max gambled away his family fortune in just a few years, so he's got Max's attention. There's a long line of suitors waiting to see Penelope in the Wilhern residence. Outside, Lemon and Edward are waiting at the back of the van. Lemon hands Max a jacket that has a camera installed in the lapel. All Max has to do to take a photo is raise either of his arms. Max enters the residence and tells Wanda he was sent by the agency. He's directed into a room where other suitors are waiting to see Penelope. He lays behind the couch to adjust the camera equipment. Penelope walks into the room and greets the suitors. Immediately, all the suitors scream and run out of the room. Only Max remains, since he hadn't seen Penelope when she walked in. Wanda spots Max sitting in the room, and all the ladies are shocked that one of the suitors is left. Penelope rushes back into the room and begins conversing with Max. They talk about a certain book she saw Max put in his pocket. Max comes clean and tells her he was stealing the book, since it's the first edition, so he thought it would be worth something. He asks her about her favorite book and she tells him that it's Moby Dick, which is placed on the top shelf, the third bookshelf from the left. She turns and leaves but fakes her exit, and sneaks back to watch Max grab the book and leave the room. Max rushes back into the room, trying to catch Penelope watching, but he's disappointed when he finds that she isn't in the room. He stares at the mirror for a while before turning to leave. And as he's walking out, she calls out to him, asking if he'll come back the next day. And he responds with a yes. Wanda and Penelope's mom are very happy as they watch the feed from the room. Max walks back to the van and informs Edward and Lemon that he didn't get the photo, but he'll go back tomorrow. So Max returns the next day and paces around the room. He picks something off the shelf and blows into it. Penelope's voice startles him as she asks if he plays. He says he doesn't and asks her to guess what he does play. The room is filled with instruments and Max tries his hand at the bass. Penelope tells him to try the drums, saxophone, and guitar, but Max sucked at all of them. She tells him to stop, but Max finishes the song, and she's pleased with his terrible performance. They play chess as Max finds out that Penelope wants to be a horticulturist. He laughs and says he thinks she'd be a great cop, since she likes interrogating people. He also finds out that Penelope has never had a beer from Tap. He suggests that they should go to the Clover Dilly Pub. She says going to the pub sounds good. She talks about the vendors at the street fairs and going to the park. Max says he used to hang out at the park writing love songs. She asks him why he doesn't do that anymore. But he changes the subject to the chessboard as he tries to win the game. And Penelope checkmates his queen. The next day, Edward and Lemon don't know why it's taking so long for Penelope to reveal herself to Max. In the room, Penelope says she bets the piano is Max's instrument. But when he sits at the piano to play, she guides him on what keys to play and later comes to place her hand on top of his to guide him. 
He turns around and is immediately startled by her face. He stares for a few seconds, then reaches over to touch her face when the camera equipment triggers. He retreats, and she runs out of the room. Max leaves the residence and smashes the camera equipment when he got to the van. Penelope's mom and Wanda spot him talking to Lemon. Max runs back into the house and tries to explain things to Penelope, but he's stopped by her mom, who tells her daughter all about Lemon and all they've been through because of him. Penelope begs Max to help her break the curse, and then she'll look like everyone else. She said she would kill herself if the curse isn't broken when Max accepts her as his wife. Max says he can't, and he's ushered out of the house by Penelope's mom and Wanda. Penelope sneaks out of the house with a scarf over her face. Lemon and Edward see her, and they decide to follow her. She goes to the park, watching the vendors and the kids playing. In the Wilhern residence, her parents are sitting by the phone when Penelope calls to wish them goodbye. She continues wandering the streets before she decides to go into a hotel. She enters and pays for her room, and in the room, she takes off the scarf and stares out the window. Lemon and Edward get a sketch artist to come up with a portrait of Penelope, which they use on the front page of the morning paper. Penelope's mom collapses when she sees the paper, and Edward's father scolds him for his part in the published photo. Penelope's parents and an officer track her to the hotel she's staying at, and Penelope escapes when she sees them. She calls Lemon and offers to get him the photos he needs so she can claim the money. They agree on a location, and Penelope gets her photos taken in a photo booth. She delivers the photos to Lemon, lowering it in a paper bag containing those photos, which Lemon placed money into the bag after retrieving it. Penelope's mom sees the front page showing Penelope and passes out again. Penelope goes to the bar and asks for a beer from the tap. The bartender fills the glass and slides it to her, but it falls and breaks because she didn't catch it. He slides another one over, and this time she stops the glass and asks for a straw. Annie chats with the bartender as Penelope listens to their conversation, briefly commenting when asked to by Annie. Penelope chats with Annie for a while. She's drunk at this point. Max meets this old-time band buddy, Sam, and asks if he can get back to playing for Sam's band. Sam's hesitant, since Max has disappointed him in the past. He asks Max to play something, and he begins by playing the piano. Penelope goes on a ride through the city on Annie's Vespa. They walk as Annie shares her experiences with Penelope. Her parents are searching through the city, and they spot her as she walks by. Penelope runs into the bar and passes out from exhaustion. Annie removes her scarf to reveal her true identity. Penelope wakes up in a hospital and walks towards a group of doctors and newsmen separated from her by a window. She's shocked they aren't running away as other people have always done. Her mother rushed to her side and shut the blinds. The family walks out of the hospital to face a large group of reporters. Through the crowd, Penelope is ushered by her parents into a waiting car, but she refuses and wants to leave on Annie's Vespa. Penelope became an overnight superstar, a celebrity loved by a lot of people. A group of reporters swarm Edward. One reporter asked if it's true that he attempted to file assault charges against Penelope. He confirms the fact and calls Penelope horrible names. His father gets mad at him and scolds him. Penelope has an awkward conversation with Max. Her parents show up to take her home, and when she arrives, she sees Edward, who has come to beg for a second chance. She's hesitant, but her mother convinces her to accept Edward's proposal. She accepts his proposal, and they become engaged. Larry walks into Lemon's office and asks if Lemon would help him with the story he's working on. Larry reveals that the story is a robbery case against Max Campion. Larry arrives to see Max in jail, but a different guy shows up. Only then does Larry realize he approached the wrong man. He asks Max about the other guy, and Max says the guy's name is Johnny Martin. At an event, Johnny shows up and tries to have a conversation with Penelope, but Edward prevents this at all costs. Penelope's mom leads her away as John and Edward head for the bathroom. They argue, and Edward reveals he doesn't love Penelope and that he's disgusted by the thought of kissing her. Lemon goes to see Johnny, and they discuss the curse on Penelope. On their wedding day, Edward's looking uncomfortable as he stands in front of the priest to say his vows. When the priest asks Penelope if she would take Edward as her husband, she stares at Edward, who's disturbed. She says no, and then runs off. Her mom runs after her. She locks the door behind herself, and her mom rushes over and begs her to return to the wedding so the curse can be broken. In a state of distress, Penelope tells her mom that she likes herself the way she is. Instantly, a series of flashbacks occur, and Penelope's nose begins to reduce in size until it becomes evenly shaped. 
and now the family's happy that their daughter is normal. As they embrace each other in tears, her mom suggests that she get a nose job. This infuriates Penelope, and she decides to leave the house to find her own way in life. She becomes a school teacher and writes a letter to Edward apologizing for what happened between them and also returning the ring to him. At a costume party, Penelope is attending with Annie. She finds Johnny, and they reconnect. The movie ends with Johnny pushing Penelope on a swing. Lemon watches from his camera and smiles. Penelope was released in 2006. The movie was produced by Stone Village Pictures, Type A Films, Grosvenor Park Productions, Tatara Active Film, and Zephyr Films. Some of those that starred in the movie are Christina Ricci, James McAvoy, Peter Dinklage, Catherine O'Hara, Richard E. Grant, and Reese Witherspoon. If you were in Penelope's shoes, would you have gone through with the wedding? Tell me with the hashtags in a recap in the comments.